I am getting this material from chapter eight in Peter Van Inwagen's book titled Metaphysics, and I'm using the fourth edition. That's what the chapter eight is from. And in that chapter, he asked this question, what rational beings are there? So the investigation is what kind of beings exist in the whole universe that are rational beings. And there are humans, of course. And in fact, humans are the only rational beings whose existence is not controversial. But there are other possibilities, and that would include God or gods, angels, fairies, elves, you know, all kinds of uh, beings that we might typically call fictional beings as well. But only one of those is taken really seriously. No philosophers take seriously the existence of fairies or Odin or Zeus. And of course, it's God as traditionally conceived that is taken seriously. Otherwise, we don't really know about other things. And, you know, even with generative AI, there are no rational computers. There are no rational robots that exist now that we are aware of. One other possibility, how about rational extraterrestrial beings? Certainly our science fiction is full of these. Um, humans are the only ones that are uncontroversial, but rational extrater extraterrestrials that seems relatively plausible, something that could be taken seriously, although the evidence for them eludes us. For one thing, note that the technology required to travel the distance to get to Earth would be such that a civilization that could make it here and the minimum distance, absolute minimum distance, the civilization would have to travel would be four uh, light years. And uh, that's how far away Alpha Centauri uh, system is. Uh, so they would have to be in an incredibly advanced state, far beyond ours. Uh, but then again, is there any reason to believe that they might exist, that there might be rational extraterrestrial beings. Well, let's take this seriously and think it through a little more. If there are such beings and they have visited Earth, well, their technology would be incredibly impressive. It would be advanced enough so that if they wanted us to be aware of them, we would be aware of them. That wouldn't be a problem. But if they didn't want us to be aware of them, they could hide themselves. We would not be aware of them. It's not like they can travel that great of a distance and then they're going to end up crashing, right? Their technology would be well beyond some accident happening to them. Uh, so it seems like we don't really have evidence at all. There's no reason to think that they visited Earth. But of course, it's a different question whether such rational beings exist at all. Now, again, we currently have no reason to think that they do. Uh, but then again, we also have no reason to think that they do not. Uh, the SETI Institute, which uh, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence is searching for signs of their existence and has been for many years. But as yet, we have not found any such indications. All of the Milky Way galaxy, which includes uh, at least 10 million stars, is within 100,000 light years. And so that would have been, you know, long enough uh, in existence for such extraterrestrial beings that are rational to have evolved. And yet, We've picked up no radio signal. We've picked up no laser indications that such beings exist. Rationality is very unique. Let's just think of it in terms of Earth. Rationality is 
arisen on Earth only once. Humans are the only rational species. Of all the millions and maybe even billions of species, only one is rational. Uh, now, that's in contrast to, say, sight or flight that it has arisen in different ways among various species, genera, and even classes. So uh, consider uh, flight. We, we have uh, reptiles with the pterodactyls. We have uh, birds, of course. We have insects. We have uh, a subset of mammals that includes bats. So that even just that's, you know, uh, very quick imagining there. Uh, there are at least four different possible paths for the development of flight. And sight is even much more common than that. Now, there has been a tendency of humans to speculate on other intelligent beings, from people imagining trolls and goblins to an urge to believe in intelligent Martians, which was taken seriously for a while until the 20th century uh, kind of ruled that out. Uh, current science fiction speculations about Klingons or Krees. Uh, so we have this tendency of imagining such things. But as far as we know, there are no intelligent extraterrestrial beings, and humans are unique in rationality in the cosmos. It's just not that common. So maybe we should ask a different question here, and that's what Ben Inwagen does. Why are there any rational beings at all? Uh, if all we know of are humans, why would there be any humans that exist? Now, we're not concerned with their purposes here. Uh, we're just concerned with why they came into existence. What, what was the purpose of the origin of humans that are rational beings? Now, there are two primary responses to this question. Uh, one response, sorry, is the existence of rational beings like humans is due to the purposeful action of a non-human being. That's one possibility. Or another possibility is that rational beings are here due to chance. So Van Inwagen uh, spends a little bit of time exploring the possibility of chance. So what's the explanation? The classic explanation is that the world is eternal and given an infinite amount of time, all configurations of matter are going to come about at one time or another. And since the existence of complex configurations of matter is not surprising, the fact that there are rational beings is not surprising. And it would just be by chance and rational animals serve no purposes. Their features are accidents. It's similar to a pile of pixie sticks dropped on a table. Now that view reached its height of popularity in the 19th century, but in the 20th century, uh, we developed a problem with this view. And the problem is that we've learned that the universe is finite. It's not eternal. It doesn't have all that time to have an infinite period of time so that all the configurations of matter could exist. And though it seems that the, you know, 13.7 billion years is a long time, and certainly it does seem like that, it's not anywhere nearly long enough for all possible configurations of matter. In fact, then in Wagen, suggest it comes billions times billions times billions years short and even more than that. So uh, let's consider his pondering on this. He says that to imagine any one of the possible living configurations being produced by a random mixing of atoms in a universe the age and size of ours would be like imagining a dart thrown at random toward a target as big as a galaxy and hitting a bullseye smaller than an atom. Uh, basically, zero, right? It's, 
it's so close to zero that it's really doesn't even merit uh, a number attached to it, although we will consider one in a moment. So life is extremely improbable. The laws of physics limit the number of particles that exist, how they could possibly interact, and only a, an extremely small proportion of these possibilities could allow for rational life. Now, extremely small is an understatement um, since even if the cosmos were, say, a quadrillion times its current age, the probability would still be essentially zero. Now, Darwinian mechanisms that Van Inwagen accepts require the existence of self-reproducing -re molecules, right? That is essential for Darwinian evolution to make sense. And even from those, suppose they were some, getting to beavers or dolphins is a matter of faith. Now, that's not to say it's false, uh, but it is to say that it's a matter of faith that it's true. And the only reason to think it's true is to rule out from your assumptions immediately that there was any intentional design for the cosmos. Now, there's a different problem. And this can be expanded on a lot more than we will in this video. But we can imagine other possible cosmoi and what they would be like. So we can imagine the nature of elementary particles and the forces that restrict how those particles interact reveal that well, the world as we know it is a very tightly integrated whole. Nearly all of the numbers that you could plug in for those particles and forces, they can't be predicted theoretically, right? There's something that we had to discover and there's no apparent necessity to the numbers. It's not that we can logically deduce those numbers either. We haven't been able to do either one of those things. So what does contemporary science say? And let's stick with me. I know there's going to be a lot of text on the next three couple slides here, but let's think it through. If the cosmos were, were much different at all, there would not be conditions suitable for life of any kind, including rational beings. So what conditions are we talking about? Well, in order for there to be living organs, organisms of any kind, you have to have some matter that can form complex relationships. So you have to have a variety of elements and they can't just be uh, you know, one proton or two protons. You have to have some more complexity than that. You also have to have a stable environment uh, for life to evolve and you need a consistent source of energy for living organisms to have in order to take in energy from their environment and grow and reproduce. Now, very small changes in any of the several numbers related to the particles and forces would result in a cosmos either that only lasts for a few seconds or where there are no atoms at all or where there's only hydrogen and helium or radioactive radioactivity is wildly variable, or in which there were no stars at all. And in all of those cases, in cosmoi of those sorts, there's no possible way that you could have the conditions suitable for life. And even if you did, of course, it wouldn't guarantee life, but there wouldn't be any life at all with those various imagined cosmos. So what are the odds? Of course, it's hard to say, uh, but imagining that there's a machine that produces cosmo. So just, you know, do this thought experiment. Suppose the machine has 20 or 30 dials. Let's make it 30. Others suggest it would have 50 or more dials. Uh, Van Inwagen stays in that range of 20 to 30. Suppose the features of the cosmoid then are produced. The, the features are are determined by the settings on the dial for this 
cosmoid producing machine. So something like the following is true. So I put the numbers up on the screen so you can look at them. Uh, the pointer on dial number 18 is set at, and you see the number there, uh, a very specific number. But if it had been set just uh, slightly lower or just slightly higher to a very, very, very small degree, then there would be no carbon atoms or other elements that play the role of carbon that we're aware of with living organisms that we're familiar with. And so life would not exist. There's not going to be the complex interactions necessary for living organisms. And this is likewise uh, for all of the dials, there's just this very small range that they have to be set at or there's no lasting universe or no stars or the other things that allow for a suitable environment for life. So back to our initial question, we have humans, is there any other kind of rational being? Well, the actual cosmos is one of maybe only a very few cosmoi suitable for life. And by very few, we mean, you know, 0. 0.000, Imagine I say uh, dozens of more zeros and then 1%, right? That's the allowable to do, uh, deal for cosmos. Um, and even then, if you have the suitable conditions, it doesn't guarantee that life exists. So why is our cosmos life permitting when it was way more likely that it was not? Well, one option, again, the first option that we already suggested, is that there's a being who has the knowledge, the understanding, the power, and the interest in making a cosmos suitable for rational beings. And we have a concept of God, of course, who has those characteristics. And, and some believe that that's not a coincidence at all, and so the answer to the question, is there another rational being is yes, and that being is God. Now, I do talk much more thoroughly about this uh, argument about the cosmos in videos exploring uh, Van Inwagen's view on the place of rational beings in the world, but those are other videos.